guys. Welcome to Cryptids Canada. I hope you're all having a marvelous day. So before I get started, you know what I wanted to say. I have come to this realization that a lot of the stories I receive are like secondhand, usually a grandparent telling their experience to their grandchild, and then we hear the story from the grandchild. And to be completely honest, I love those stories. And another thing that I have noticed is that many of the stories that I receive are from the 60s, 70s, and 80s, mainly the baby boomers or the Gen Xers, which is really cool because that's who's listening to this channel mostly. We got some young ones in there, but usually it's people that are a little older, and I love that. So anyways, okay, enough of the jibber jabber. Let's get to the story. Hey girl, I love your channel. I was clueless of all this a couple of years ago. Well, let me rephrase that. I've always known about Bigfoot, but I just never knew it had such a big presence on YouTube. So I'll try to recall the story as much as I can, okay? It's not my story, but was told to me from my granddad back when I was a kid in the 80s. Actually, granddad told me what happened to him and his friend when they were kids back in the 50s. It all started when he was asked to help out his old crazy aunt Anita over the summer. He was invited to take a friend and Anita would pay them at the end of the summer. Both boys were about 13 years old, Granddad recalled. Both Granddad and his friend Greg were born and raised in northern Tennessee. They packed their suitcases and were waiting to go when Aunt Anita came to pick them up. It would take them about three hours to get from Knoxville to just outside of the small town of Damascus, Virginia. Granddad explained that Aunt Anita was his father's sister, and she was quite a lot older than him. He also explained that Aunt Anita's husband died in a mining accident and left her very well off because of a lot of property that they owned. She struggled with her grief. She thought that people were always talking about her, so she decided to have a house built in the side of a mountain in Virginia where her husband loved to spend his time. The home was beautiful, and it indeed offered her the privacy that she craved. The home overlooked quite a large stream out the back of the property, where Anita would spend a lot of her days fishing. She loved to fish. It was dark and gloomy in the thick woods, and the family all worried about her being there all alone. But she insisted that she was fine, and that it was the way she liked it. But she would always say that everyone was welcome to visit her as well, just that nobody ever did. People really did think that Aunt Anita was a little on the eccentric side, but she would drive to Tennessee and spend time with her brother and his family, even though she was well into her 60s. Aunt Anita was the oldest sibling and born long before Granddad's father. But she would love to come and buy expensive gifts for all her nieces and nephews. She loved her small family. The whole family tried to get her to look at houses closer to them, but she wouldn't have any of it. She talked about her new friends who lived near her and how they would come by and visit with her. When the family asked what their names were, she would say, Well, that's the funny part. They don't talk much, and they don't seem to bathe much either. But they were very kind to her, 
and would bring her gifts of fish from the stream, quite often, actually. But usually it was after Aunt Anita would spend the day baking for the church bake sales and hadn't thought much about cooking her dinner. So the fish was a welcome gift. So the family would back off so as not to push Anita too far away. Granddad's mom felt that pushing too hard would push her away and then she wouldn't trust them anymore. She would say Aunt Anita is a grown woman. So Anita asked Granddad and his friend to come back to Virginia and help her do some chores that needed to be done. They agreed, so the next day they all drove back to Aunt Anita's house. Granddad said everything looked fine. It was, of course, gloomy in the woods, as he recalled. But the boys started on raking up the thick leaves, wearing snake boots that Anita still had from her husband's belongings. A snake bite way out here scared Aunt Anita, so the leaves were best to go. That night, Anita was so happy with the job they did. Then she said she was always concerned her friends might get bitten when they came through the forest over to her stream to fish. Then the next day, they were woken up to the aroma of fresh-baked bread, and as they cleaned the wood stoves, they smelled the mouth-watering sweet baked goods. Then at dinner time, they began to hear loud grunting sounds, and Aunt Anita got excited and said, Oh, it's my friends. And she said, Come and give me a hand. And both boys got up, and Anita handed them boxes that weren't that big. But each boy carried a box, and they followed Anita out to the small porch that went to the back of the property off the kitchen that overlooked the stream. There were eight stairs going down to the ground. The boys hadn't used this entrance before, as it faced the back of the property. They used the side door next to where Anita parked her car. When Anita opened the door, neither boy noticed anything until they were already on the porch. Anita turned and took a box from Greg first and set it down. And then Granddad said he was surprised when Greg let out a yelp and then ran back behind him. Then Anita took the box from Granddad's hands and all of a sudden he realized he was standing face to face with a hair-covered giant man. And behind him was a hair-covered woman with long skinny breasts that hung down to her waist. The odd-looking humans were standing on the ground and still came face to face with the boys. Looking back now, Granddad said they had to be seven to nine feet tall. Then Grandpa continued his story and said both boys jumped back and Aunt Anita scolded them and said, please don't treat our guests rudely. Both boys were terrified and breathing heavily. Greg started to cry, and Aunt Anita said, Look, boys, look at the new baby. And they looked up, and they could just make out the baby holding on to the hair on its mother's back. Granddad said, It looked about the size of a two-year-old human baby. Both boys noticed the smell at the same time. It was absolutely revolting. When Granddad worked up the courage to look up as they both had been staring at the floor, Granddad watched as the first giant man walked away with the box, and then the female placed two large trout on the floor at Aunt Anita's feet, and then she picked up the second box of baked goods, and then she gave Anita a nod of her head, and then grunted and walked away and the baby just clung to her mother's back as she stared at the boys. Anita picked up the fish and said, I'm so ashamed by how rude you boys were. These are my friends, and they didn't even want to visit with me because of your bad behavior. Anita walked into the house with the fish and said, This will be our supper tomorrow night. Greg and I just looked at each other, 
and quietly question Aunt Anita's sanity. We both started to panic when Greg said, What are we going to do? We've still got three more weeks. Earlier in the day, Greg tried to use the phone to call his mother to say hello, but it wouldn't work. Aunt Anita explained that she shared a party line with someone up the road, and something must have happened to their line, she thought. So we just agreed. After that, we would just stay together and just try to get through the next three weeks, or until the phone got fixed at least. Both boys just kept whispering to each other, what were they? What could they have been? Later in the evening, Anita called us into the living room where she sat knitting. She invited us to sit down with her. She said, I know you boys were terribly frightened today by my friends, but I would like to explain something to you. She started by saying that she lost her husband eight years earlier and her life was extremely sad from day to day. So she built this house where her husband loved to come and she felt closer to him. But not one person before you boys has ever come to visit me. I drive to church every week supplying baked goods for the Monday sale. I drive to family functions. So when the opportunity arose to have you boys come and stay with me for a while to earn a little extra money for high school next fall, I thought, what the heck, Anita, you help these boys. But I wanted to explain how I came to be friends with the big people. One day four years ago, I was walking in the woods looking for mushrooms, and I accidentally stumbled over a rotten log and then tumbled away down a hill. I was in terrible pain, and I knew instantly that I had broken my ankle. It was a dangerous position to be in because of the snakes alone. Then, later, as it was getting dark, I felt the presence of eyes on me. I could hear the deep breaths of a large animal. I was terribly afraid, and I talked to it so softly, and I felt a calm come over me, so much so that I fell asleep without any pain or worry. You see, my friends have that ability. They are kind and caring beyond anything I've ever experienced in my whole life. But I have also witnessed a side of them that can be described as not so kind in our human terms. But back to my story. At some point in the night, I felt my body being lifted and carried by an extremely strong hair-covered body, and it desperately needed a bath. But he carried me so gently so as not to cause me pain, and a short while later, I was being placed in the back of a pickup truck, then it walked back into the woods, but I could still hear it breathing. I still felt safe, and I fell back to sleep. The next thing I knew, I was being woken up by a neighbor I had never met before, and he and his lovely wife drove me to the hospital where I got my leg put in a cast. I ended up taking a cab back home. That night, I let the whole family know about my broken foot. No one came to check on me. No one except the big, hairy people that you saw earlier today. Then Greg asked Antonita if they were monsters, and she said, No, I don't think so. But one day, they were visiting a year or so earlier. Their other child, who didn't come today, was playing near the stream when a big, rabid dog came out of the woods and was going to attack the young one. The father roared a loud, deafening scream and ran between the rabid dog and the child. And it grabbed the dog and, well, let's just say he put that dog out of its misery. So, boys, I would like you to finish your time here and try to see them for what they are. I promise they won't hurt you or I can take you home if you are that fearful. So Greg and 
Grandpa talked and they decided to stay. Granddad said that they saw the creatures only one other time. Anita warned them ahead of time that she would be baking treats the next day and the smell would call in her friends to come for a visit. Greg chose to stay inside, but Granddad stayed beside Anita, just watching. Anita had made a dozen candied apples, and the little kids got one each, and all three young ones of various ages, including a baby that had clung to its mother's back, all sat on the ground and ate their candied apples. The biggest one, the male, was eyeing the tray that the rest of the apples sat on. Anita gave a laugh and held the tray out, and the big one grabbed the stick and put the whole apple in its mouth and pulled the stick out and tossed it down on the ground. After a little while, another one came out of the woods, but this one seemed to be an older child, kind of like a teenager. Grandpa said it had two big fish in its hand. The fingers held the fish through the gills as he walked. It came up slowly as it noticed Grandad, and it seemed to not trust Grandad at all. He acknowledged Aunt Anita and placed the fish on the step. Anita offered him an apple, and his eyes opened wide. He was excited to try them, and then he walked out of sight. So that was the last time that he saw the Bigfoot at Aunt Anita's house. I asked Anita what would happen if she didn't have time to do the baking. And she said, well, nothing would happen. They would still bring her fish. But sometimes Anita would just go to the grocery store and pick up fruits and vegetables and whatever else she thought that they would enjoy. They loved apples and pears, but never grapefruit or oranges. She once hit a deer and asked a man to help her put it in her trunk. And she called out to them, and they came the next day, early in the morning, and they were very thankful to get the deer. They didn't talk to Anita, she said, but somehow she understood them, and they understood her. So that was the story that my grandfather told me. I tried to keep it as accurate as possible, but I may have missed a few things here and there. Take care, as you Canadians say, LOL, Ron Shepard. There you go. That was another good story. I hope you all enjoyed it as much as I did. I hope everybody has a wonderful evening, and I hope to see you back here in a day or two. Please don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Hit the bell if you want notifications of when I'm going to upload. And of course, subscribe. Oh my goodness, I almost forgot to mention again. For those of you who are wondering, Kitty from Pine Box Tales has had to restart her channel and she's renamed it Pine Box Mysteries. So I'll put a link to the new channel in the description box. I am so sorry that I keep forgetting to mention that. Okay guys, you know I love ya. We'll see you soon. Bye for now.